Every year after I do this race, I write in my Seahorse article about how great this race is. So I'm here in Antigua, about to embark on my first offshore long distance race. Um, why? Why not? I would just, I'd like to give it a go, try it, see if I do like it. It's just different. So we're not expecting standard predictable trade winds, but a complex series of forecasts, and that may open up the race quite a bit. We're all a bit disappointed with the forecast, but we're hoping for the best. It's just going to have to be, we'll take it as it comes and try and make the best decisions we can when the time comes. I'm looking forward to this year because it's going to be different. You know, when we have the trade winds, you kind of kind of know the course and you know the subtleties and you know where the passing lanes are. There's a lot of experience on the course, a lot of boats, you know, have done it multiple times. So we're sort of applying our normal approach, which is be as prepared as we can, give it our best shot. Uh, the battle with Proteus is going to be a good one. You know, it's a very well sailed boat. You'd have to think that the uh, it's going to be 600 miles of nip and tuck. I think it's going to be a real, real uh, hard one and uh, hopefully we'll come out on top again. We'll see. With Fedo Cube, we should be faster in a wide range, not always. Maybe for reaching uh, Maserati will be faster. Giovanni and uh, Maserati, great team, really good boat. What's unique about their boat is it was a Mod 70 like ours, but uh, it has foils. Um, unfortunately, they damaged one side of their boat, so they can only foil on a starboard tack. But on the starboard tack, it could potentially be, I think, anywhere from four to seven knots quicker. I think the hardest part is probably going to be trying to like stay awake and cope with sailing and racing like 24 hours the whole day. There's certainly some phases in this race where rest is going to be critical and quite easy and then there's going to be other times when you know all hands on deck and we're going to be changing through the sails and you know, trying to make things as slick and efficient as possible. In the end, if we win, if we cross the line ahead and correct on them, we're going to feel great. But it'll be close, I'm sure. We kind of have to sail our own race because conditions are going to dictate that. And if we're behind, wait for the opportunity to present itself. And uh, one thing you know for sure over this 600 miles, there will be plenty of opportunity. We're here to win. Uh, we're here to do well, as everyone is. It will be an adventure. An adventure we'd like to win, though. So here we are, we're 17 hours before the start. Uh, everybody's getting a little nervous about it, but no one knows what's really going to happen. We're going to get a very different race, and that's very, very exciting. You never get used to it. You, you think, oh, it'll be a light air, pleasant race, and then it just hanging on for dear life, you know, reaching it 36 knots, and wow, it's incredible. These boats are amazing. I guess having Maserati nipping at our heels and pushing us, we were both pushing, pushing, and uh, the, a lot of the wind rotation actually helped us get around the course pretty quickly. Oh, it was a fascinating race. It was almost like you're doing the race backwards. We had an amazing race with Maserati and they pushed us really hard in the way. We thought we got, got away several times but they, they always caught us up. We figured if we beat her to Redondo we would win the race and thankfully we did. So. But they, they gave us a great race, it was awesome. We was able to, you know, to catch up uh, each time uh, some wind come and uh, to play with them uh, really until uh, the end. In the last buoy we was at one minute. I am uh, very, very pleased with my crew and uh, I think we do a nice race. It went to windward of us, up in the air, hooting and hollering, waving at us. We, we enjoyed seeing them up and doing the wild thing.
Well, I would say the forecast was right on. I mean, the breeze went basically through 360, as expected. Good rates. There's unlimited power when you get in those conditions, and so and the boat's quite easy to sail in terms of the helm side of thing. I mean, it loads up, but not, not so bad. And then you get to the top, you turn the corner to Zitterai, and you have the Atlantic Ocean coming at you, and the swells are eight or nine feet high. None of that is. Uh, kudos to the guys on board because we did a lot of sail changes. I'm sure everybody's exhausted. And, you know, massive kudos to the Proteus team as well because they sailed, they sailed a great race. It was, it was great, great race. Yeah, it's one of the best races I can ever I don't know really what happened to him on that beat, but you know, we got ahead when it was right. when it counted. They kept fighting. We, we slowed down to change sails and stuff like that. They got up to us. A very good race, very tricky. I think we did 60 sail changes. <laughs> <laughs> Even just from here, from Redonda to here, we saw every sail that we had available in the times. You know, it was a it was a match race based around the course. Very intense racing. Around a fantastic course. And well, it's hard to get much better. We had Rambler in our sights as a bit of a target. You know, she's she's a hundred percent thoroughbred racing, and and once she gets into her conditions, she's just many many knots faster than us. They clicked into that mode a few times and sort of sailed away. It probably for us not as intense as it was for the guys on the 272s. We, we had a grandstand view of of them duking it out pretty much the whole way around the race course. The match we had with uh, Leopard sometime and the two mini maxi is great for us because can catch them and uh, we passed each other for many times. I, I don't know much about SFS and the, and the team they, they, they had on board but oh, clearly they've you know got quite a lot of talent there and, and um, you know they sailed really really well. Between us and them it kind of boiled down to uh, the, the beat up back up to Barbuda Mark where we just could sail a whole lot higher and a whole lot faster. You can have a very good winter racing in the West Indies then come and have fun and pleasure in West Indies for sure, it's a good venue for everybody. The first part of the race was a surprise because we were expecting a lot less wind and the boat, we were in over 10 knots the whole way. It became a little bit painful, a lot of um, getting stuck and watching the boats behind you catch up with you, you know, a bit of stop start, which again makes it frustrating but adds an interesting dynamic. We sailed pretty much around the 600 mile course with Shumana and Runaway uh, in sight. And uh, they're both in our class, so it was, you know, it was important to stay on them. And, and um, we were uh, beating them both, actually, um, pretty much all the way around the track until last night when uh, Runaway got very light and Runaway got biased. Um, and we sat in a hole for what seemed like forever with 0.0, .0 on the Speedo. And we lost steerage and we started to go the wrong way and we had to drop the jib, or curl the jib to get the bow back up because we just didn't have the steerage and we watched them kind of sail right around us and over the horizon. We were going around the track a little bit later than normal, so you get to see islands that during the day that you'd normally see at night. And, you know, I, don't know, I haven't counted how many islands we went around. There were a lot of them, and they're all very different. Some are volcanic. In fact, Montserrat was, was, was letting off gas and soot this morning. You know, it's just um, very picturesque and, and pretty and, and a lot of fun. So a water spout, humpback whales, I'd never seen phosphorescence before at night. What else? We had a couple of brooches. You know, it was all kicking off in the first 24 hours, you know. You go fast and we've all the figure eights around all the islands. It's, um, it's a really a challenge. That was from about 20 minutes into the race four days ago. It's just been relentless with Taz. They sailed about very well and it was really good to be in front of them for all of the race. Tacking up the shore here, here at Antigua, and we felt we had the better and, and they did a sail change and we were just playing the shifts up the shore and we finally passed them after many days. They finally got us at the end, but it's probably because we are getting a little bit tired.
seat is always fantastic. As I said, I will be back if I'm above the ground next year. We're looking forward to a 10th anniversary. I'll be 72, I hope, or dead, one or the other. Ha, ha, ha.